Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about uh, synchronous motors. So let's begin. We have learned from the synchronous generators that for a, a three phase uh, means there are three generators and similarly uh, three phase uh, motors also can be uh, thought to be of three separate motors. And from here, we can just take one of it, and so its per phase equivalent circuit will be like this. This is the field, and this is the armature side and the load. Now, f the difference between motor and generator is the circuit remains same. That in case of a generator, E A is greater, but in case of a motor, the supply voltage will be more, and then after the loss it will reach the motor. So we can say that VA or sorry V phaser is equal to drop here, drop here and this voltage. So EA plus excess IA plus RA IA. And from here we can also find the voltage across the motor. Now straight away go to the example 6.1 and in this example uh, a 208 volt 45 kVA 0 0.8 power factor leading delta connected 60 hertz synchronous machine has a synchronous reactance negligible armature resistance if friction and windage losses are given here core loss given here Initially, the shaft is supplied with 15 or supplying a 15 horsepower load or actually uh, it is driving uh, a 15 horsepower load and the motor's power factor is 0 0.8 leading and we have to find these three parameters. So, we will do it or follow it one by one. Now, I have just noted all the key points here, the terminal voltage whenever the voltage is given in case of a motor or generator that voltage is always the terminal voltage or the line to line voltage so the terminal voltage is given rated power given power factor given and various parameters excess and the load and the losses given so the first question is to sketch the phasor diagram of the motor and find values of ia il and ea uh, the phasor diagram will look something like this and it is plotted from this equation in our case r a is negligible zero so this will uh, be zero so this is the relation that we're going to plot now this we can say is the reference line the phase angle uh, of v phasor will be zero the current will be at an angle of theta i a and the motor voltage will be at the angle of delta and this is this uh, the connecting arm is xsia now so to plot we need to find ia v phasor and ea uh, sorry v per phase not phasor v per phase these were the uh, values given and these are the formulas that we'll be using. Uh, as we go, I'll explain these formulas. So the first thing is that we convert the horsepower into electric power. So we multiply it by 0 0.746 kilowatt per HP. So our power of the motor is 11.19 kilowatt. Now the total power as we have seen from the power flow diagram is or the power in is power out plus mechanical loss, core loss, electric loss. Now in our case electric loss is zero, this is given, this is given and P out we have just calculated 11.9. So the input power that we have to supply to, to uh, turn this load is 13.69 kilowatt. Okay, now we'll use this formula 
to find I L and this formula is actually derived from here. We know that the power N is under root 3, terminal voltage, line current and cosine of theta. So from here I L is this formula and now we know the values so we will plug in the values. This we have already calculated from here. Vt is the terminal voltage which is given 208, so 208 and power factor is given 0 0.8, so 0 0.8. So our line current is 47.5 ampere. Now line current 47.5 ampere. Now let's relate it with this diagram, the delta connection of the motor. Now in the delta connection the terminal voltage is same as the per phase voltage that means Vt is equal to V5 but the current is different the line current is greater than the phase current and the relation is actually that I per phase is uh, which is Ia in our case because the, uh, this is the current flowing through the armature is line current divided by under root 3. So Ia we can calculate from here, 47.5 divided by under root 3 is 27.4 ampere. Now this is the magnitude for the uh, plot we need the phase angle as well. So I phasor we can write 27.4 and cosine of the theta or cosine of the power factor, cos inverse of the power factor. And this, when you calculate, will be 36.87. Okay, now from here, we calculate Ea. We had learned this to be zero. Negligible armature resistance. So this equation, we know V, V5. This was the terminal voltage. And from here, S, S is 2.5 current we have calculated this current we will use that so solving EA is 255 angle minus 12.4 degree okay so these are the parameters that we have calculated now we can uh, plot it easily so this is our reference voltage V phase 208 angle uh, 0 degrees. The current is positive 36.87. This one. So we draw the current. Now to draw XSIA, uh, the the technique that we had earlier learned how uh, in how to plot the phase diagram of uh, synchronous generators is that. If there was IARA, that means if the, uh, there was some uh, uh, um, armature resistance, then we would have drawn it parallel to this line, parallel to IA. So we are just assuming that there is a line. And the reactive element is 90 degree of the resistive element. So we will draw a 90 degree line on this. So our XSIA will be somewhere on this line. We have already calculated Ea 255 minus 12.4. So from here we can draw Ea 255 minus 24.4. This one, and we connect this. Actually, it will be on this line to get excess Ia. And this angle 126. If you if you draw a parallel reference line from here, so from here, this angle is. 126 degrees. The second part, assume that the shaft load is now increased to 30 horsepower. Sketch the behavior of the phasor diagram in response to this change. I will not go into the details of this but we have learned in this, in this chapter if you just read that the output voltage or the motor voltage Ea keeps on lagging as we increase the load as we so in our case it will be <coughs> we can write that as the power of the shaft is increased to 30 horsepower the shaft slows momentarily 
and the internal generated voltage ea swings out to a greater length now this is i have taken from the generator so it is saying internal generated voltage but it will be the voltage applied to the motor ea will swing out to a larger angle so this angle will increase while maintaining a constant magnitude but if the magnitude will remain same so this is the locus of the magnitude so magnitude remains same but the angle changes the resulting phase diagram will be something like this so we had this diagram earlier with minus 12 now this angle uh, or the horsepower has increased therefore this angle will increase and magnitude will remain same so we can say that e a dash will be 255 and some new angle uh, delta then what is the angle that we have to find and we'll find it in the next question so the third part of the question is to find these currents ia il and ea after the load change that is after the load has been increased to 30 hp and we have to also calculate the new power factor of the motor so for this load we have to now calculate the new input power now so these factors remain same except that the power output of the motor has changed to 30 horse power we convert that into electrical and by multiplying by 0.746 so this is the new input power 24.8 kilowatt and as we have shown that the angle has increased we have to find delta so for this we have to take help of this diagram from chapter number 5 it is the simplified phase diagram with the armature resistance ignored so this was the diagram for generator and in case of a generator with no resistance we this is the baseline and this is the uh, generator or generated line now we are interested to find this one because we are interested to find this angle delta so angle delta we can find if we can calculate the perpendicular so from from here the perpendicular we can write is to be ea sin theta uh, sorry sin delta the perpendicular is equal to the hypotenuse multiplied by sin of the angle now we can relate this with the angle between voltage and current which is theta and this diagram we had al already studied in one of the videos you can see these two angles are same there is a 90 degree here and 90 degree here therefore this angle is theta angle and if we just redraw this rotate it by 90 degrees so our diagram will look like this so in terms of theta the same perpendicular which is a base now in this case will be x s i a cos theta so we can say that e a sin delta this length is actually equal to x s i a cos theta and so we'll use this relation in our case our case the diagram will be inverted with this will go down like as it is here so we can say from here that i a cos theta is x a sin delta divided by x s also we know that the power in in this case is 3 times the power per phase and so from here we can say that p is 3 v phase e a now what we have done here is the i a cos theta for i a cos theta we are writing e a sin delta over x s e a sin delta over x s and from here we can now calculate the angle delta to be sin inverse of this value so we can now calculate delta sin inverse of these values we put all the values and so the angle is 23 degrees so this angle is 23 degree down 
So the internal generated voltage E A at now the magnitude 355 fixed, but the angle is minus 23 degree. So we're continuing with the third part. We have already found E A, and now we need to find I L and I A. So from here we we can find this relation for I A. We have all these values, so we'll plug in the values. Plug in the value of V phase it or V per phase, then E A and then X S. So I A is 41.2 angle 15 degrees. And we know the relation between I A and I L is that I L is greater by under root 3. So I L will be, the magnitude of I L will be under root 3 IA which is 71.4 ampere and now the power factor we know that power factor is cos theta V minus theta I in this case theta V has an angle 0 and I has an angle of 15 so 0 minus 15 cos minus 15 is 0 0.966 the question is it is is it leading or lagging so you can guess from the diagram but let me show you an easy way without confusion from here uh, with this relation you can see that theta i is theta v plus 15 that means theta i is greater or leading and when the current lead leads the current leads in case of a capacitor and we know that the capacitor has a leading power factor. So from here we can then say that this uh, enhanced load will create a power factor of 0 0.966 leading. So I hope that you have been able to follow this and will be able to solve this type of a problem easily. Thank you.